FanDuel Casino has your chance at the number one feeling. Winning. Winning ranks higher than... <laughs> Happy Sunday to everyone out there. <laughs> How is it going? Last night was one hell of a night. Survivor Series. You know, I'm getting into it. I'm getting into Survivor Series as of right now. You see, Survivor Series was the night for the superstars. And Survivor Series was actually one of the greatest pay-per-views I could ever watch. But now, let's get down to the nitty-gritty of Survivor Series. See, on the kickoff show of Survivor Series, we saw two war game teams emerge victorious and I'm very proud to say Becky Lynch's team team Bianca Belair defeated team damage control at Survivor Series but they weren't the only team to be, to reclaim to claim their victory. We also had the men's team, Team Cody Rhodes, the team of Cody, Jey Uso, World Heavyweight Champion Seth Rollins, Sami Zayn, and the returning Randy Orton from last night. I emerged victorious against the Judgment Day. <laughs> Most of anyone knows the Judgment Day thinks just because they had the advantage, they think they can just defeat Team Cody Rhodes. And we, even, I even heard some shocking news thinking that they, they thought Randy Orton was a no-show, no, was a no-go, no-show. They thought Randy Orton wasn't going to show up. But it turns out Randy Orton showed up and Randy Orton showed out. Randy Orton gave Dominic that RKO. We almost thought he was going to RKO Jay Uso, but he didn't RKO him. He RKO'd that Dominic Mysterio. So I'm happy those two war game teams came to victory. Team. Did you hear about CM Punk showing up, dude? It was crazy. Yeah, I know. I saw. I'm getting it. But Randy Orton wasn't the only superstar to actually return to WWE. Our truth is back in WWE as well. And not only him, but the returning CM Punk. 
CM Punk, a former world heavyweight champion, a former WWE champion, United States champion, returned last night. And Seth Rollins was pretty upset, but who could blame him? Some people voted, majority of people, how did they get CM Punk to return? I don't know. But I can tell some, there were a majority of people who voted that CM Punk wasn't going to show up. But you know what they say, never say never. Because if you say that, then that means that will prove, that will motivate them more to return to return and this is actually day 34 of me as divas champion and that's enough about my title rank even though i'm going to keep talking about it but thing is about survivor series we saw amazing returns last night the return of r-truth who was in the crowd the return of cm punk and the return of the vicious viper randy orton (laughs) and what a stunning victory for team cody what a stunning victory for team bianca belair who finally got the revenge, not only against Asuka, but against Bailey, against the women's champion Io, and against Dakota Kai. And how Cody, Jay, Seth, and Randy Orton and Sami Zayn got the revenge on the Judgment Day. Rhea, and I even saw a clip on Instagram on Rhea trying to cash in Priest's money in the bank. We all know there was no World Heavyweight title match scheduled. And I'm surprised Roman and Jimmy weren't part of the Survivor Series because, you know what, no one really even cares. (laughs) Who cares? This was not about Roman Reigns. This is not. It wasn't even his time to shine no more, because that shine of his is about to go. And so those two matches actually went my way. In fact, I knew those two matches were going to win. As far as the Dragon Lee versus Santos Escobar match, Santos came out on top. The Women's World Championship match. Rhea Ripley defeated Zoe Stark. But Zoe Stark, but take no credit away from Zoe Stark. She actually brought her A game. She actually brought her A game and actually brought everything she brought to the ring. And Zoe Stark has nothing to be ashamed of. Because that was the biggest match of her career. Zoe has been champion in NXT. That was only the NXT Women's Tag Team Champions. The only time she ever was a champion. But to become champion on the main roster, I give the credit to Zoe Stark. And I have to say, that's a hell of a job. Zoe Stark put up a one great hell of a performance. Although, Mommy came on top. But for some reason, I hope, I hope someone dethrones Rhea Ripley because I am not going to stand here and keep seeing Rhea holding that title. I have no respect for Rhea. I have no respect on how she's defended that championship. Because we all know Rhea can't win a match on her own without her little Dom-Dom there. Well, even though Dom-Dom wasn't at her match, the only reason that Dominic wasn't wasn't involved in her match was only because he had a match of his own, which was the men's Survivor Series War Games team the Judgment Day. But you know what? It's time the Judgment Day crumbles. And no one cares about Judgment Day. As far as Santos Escobar goes, 
I have no respect for that Latino. I have no respect for him. After what he did to Rey Mysterio at Crown Jewel. <laughs> and after costing Rey the United States Championship. But not only costing him that, but betraying the whole LWO. Causing Zelina. You don't need a mic in your house. Boy, out you go. You make fun of me one good time and you're out of here. So, anywho, let's just be clear. <laughs> but all I can say, Survivor Series was great last night. The two War Games teams, Cody's team, Bianca's team, they did fabulous last night. And Fabulous Returns is what I was mainly excited for. But I look forward to the next competitor taking out Rhea Ripley. I look forward to another woman to take that title from Rhea. Since Zoe failed last night, take no credit from her. She did do a good job, but she failed. I look forward to another competitor that I hope someone destroys her. And I think you guys know which superstar I'm talking about. And this superstar is the irresistible force. The one whose leg can literally crush a woman's chest. So when Naya and that person happens to be Nia freaking Jax. Some people despise Nia. I was one of them who despised her. But as long as it's someone who can take that title off of Rhea Ripley, I hope Nia can get a shot and beat her for it. If she can crush Raquel Rodriguez, if she can tr crush Shayna Baszler, then Nia can crush Dominic's so-called mommy. Because no one really even cares about Rhea in no way. I don't care about her. What the? Is this God bless you? Speaking about Survivor Series War Games, uh, Ghost, what you talking? What you talking about? What the? What the hell is this? Uh, so you kind of out of here for that one. So by all means, though, you know, let's be clear. Let's just be clear. So therefore, the Escobar Dragon Lee match was horrible. The Women's World Championship match was horrible too. I mean, let's be clear, only five matches had to happen. <laughs> so I'm actually two matches that won, that went my way. But those were not the only matches that happened that night. There was specifically one more match that happened. The Intercontinental Championship match between The Miz and Gunther. Or Gunther, whatever his name is. Some people are saying Miz should have won. I'm kind of there was one of them. But I kind of knew Miz would fail. And some people were happy Gunther won. And some people were not. Be clear, I never won a Gunther as a champion. But there has to be a tough competitor who is about his height. If it were the great Kali. 
I wouldn't be surprised if Kali were to come back into the WWE and take that title off of Gunther. But you gotta remember, a giant facing a giant. And I still am a fan of the great Kali because there is no one who can stop the great Kali unless if your name is The Undertaker. Or unless if your name is Kane and The Undertaker, there is nobody who can stop the great Kali. So I know I wouldn't have been surprised if Kali were to have showed at. I mean, if Kali can beat other superstars, then I know he would have a great chance, a hundred percent chance of beating Gunther. Because let's face it, Kali is a strong one. He's taller than any superstar. He's the strongest one. And on top of that, if Gunther were to even try to let them, that would be a big shot. In fact, that could just be a dream match. Gunther versus the great Kali. That would be a match I would love to see. <laughs> I would love that. But you see, Survivor Series... I would say was like an 8 out of 10 because we saw fabulous returns two and two victorious teams but as far as three other, other, other three matches they were just flat horrible so my declaration for this is for someone to dethrone Rhea Someone who's tougher than Rhea. Someone who's bigger and badder than Rhea. Someone who is willing to get their hands on her. Thank you, Naya. So someone better get their hands on Rhea and take that championship. But we will find out who will face her for the championship. And I know Bianca Belair, and, sp and since we're talking about championships, how about, I know Bianca, Charlotte, Becky, Shotzi are looking to have a shot against EO for the women's championship. I really hope one of them earn a shot for that title. And who knows, Becky might get a shot at the Women's World Championship against Rhea Ripley. Who knows? Becky's actually faced Rhea before in 2019 back at NXT. And Becky, I've seen her as a tough, strong competitor. And her and Charlotte are actually on the same page. They got on the same page at Survivor Series last night. <laughs> Chat, is this real? Really? Did you really have to say that? You really have to just say that. So, by all means, yeah. Yeah. I just, I love Survivor Series. That's, that, you know, that depends. In fact, I don't think there's any more legitimate contenders for the World Heavyweight title. <laughs> Unless if it's Jay, Cody, Randy, Orton, or hell, even Sammy. They could be legitimate contenders for that title. And I have to actually say, I'm actually was surprised Seth and Cody remained on the same team and actually got along for that night. But I literally hope, and I think after. 
after they won and defeated Judgment Day at Survivor Series last night, I'm pretty sure my wish of them liking each other came true because they still showed each other respect. You know, that's what I like to see out of a superstar is respect. Whether you like them, whether you don't. But with Seth and Cody, I've always wanted them to, to respect each other and to like each other at some point. I look forward to it. And I know the ones who and the ones who won their matches are gonna talk about it on Monday Night Raw tomorrow night and on SmackDown as well. Santos is gonna talk about how he beat Dragon Lee. And Damage Control is gonna talk about how they lost. And Team Bianca is actually gonna talk about how their victory was going to be the quick ass victory. I mean, it's Bianca Belair says she is the EST of the WWE. She, Charlotte, Becky, Shotzi, they were bred for this for the business. And I think them coming to the WWE was the best thing that has ever happened ever since this women's evolution started. And as you can see right now, there the women's evolution is still going forward. It's still happening. You see, this women's evolution has started ever since years ago. The revolution was born. Till Nikki got up and became a two-time Divas champ, but not just that, but holding this championship for 301 days is why the revolution was stronger than ever. But then we had main events. But the first ever women's Hell in a Cell match. The first ever women's Royal Rumble match. The first ever championship swap. The first time Becky main evented WrestleMania. Winning not just the Raw Women's Championship. But the SmackDown Women's Championship. The first ever six-pack elimination challenge for the SmackDown Women's title. The first ever tables match for the SmackDown Women's Championship. The first ever Iron Woman match for the Raw Women's title. And even the first ever all women's pay-per-view WWE Evolution. Women have actually done a great job. They've done such a great job for the WWE. And if it hadn't been for Stephanie McMahon announcing the women's evolution and announcing the, for the first time events for the women, none of this would actually be possible. We would have never had the first ever women's tag team championships. Sasha Bailey becoming the first ever women's tag team champs. And we would have never had a women's world championship and a new version of the WWE women's title on SmackDown. And we would have never had unification matches at Night of Champions in 2010 for this Divas Championship and the Women's Championship thanks to The Undertaker's wife, Michelle McCool. All these women have been instrumental. I wouldn't be surprised if Triple H, Vince, and Stephanie announced another thing for the women. If, well, Triple H, he's still in the business. But if Vince and Stephanie were to come back, I'm pretty sure Stephanie, Vince, and Triple H all together will announce something for the first time for the women every since 2018. Hello?
something is wrong with the connection. Hold on. Yeah. Get down. Get down, Cafe. So, by all means, as I was saying, each and every last one of these women have been instrumental doing their thing. <laughs> but who's to say that these women haven't done a good job? I mean, if these women keep going, keep, keep shouting out, not doing requests right now. So by all means, So yeah, I wouldn't be surprised. Vince, Triple H, Stephanie making more matches for the women, more main events. I wouldn't be surprised if they brought back WWE Evolution. In fact, I want to see the all women's pay-per-view come back. And I will catch you guys soon.